Tiny One Badger here, and I know what you're thinking, Tiny One Badger, what are you doing making two YouTube videos in a year? Who are you trying to impress? M my parents. <laughs> Anyways, so, in the time I have been doing nothing but streaming, I kind of forgot how to make a fursuit. So I thought I'd do this magical thing that I've seen being done, which was not around when I was like 12 and trying to build a fursuit, by the way. Um, I thought I'd just buy a fursuit pattern and then see how I liked it. So I went on to Etsy uh, and I googled furry pattern. Then I found a bunch of them and I just literally bought the first one I saw that I thought was cute. And that turned out to be Miss Rar's Catfish. Catfisks. Catfisks. I don't know how it's pronounced. Alright, skip to the time in the description if you just want to watch me make it and don't want to hear me discuss a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's her own individual species, but I liked the look of it a little bit more than her kimono cat, and uh, I'm making a cheetah. Uh, spoilers, by the way. Uh, I'm making a cheetah, so I figured that would work really well. Like, look how adorable that is. If mine turns out half that adorable, we're, we're in good. This is the suit that I made with it, and I don't think it's as cute as hers. But, uh, I did mess up a lot. Like, there were several spots that, uh, the patterns literally said to do something and I just didn't do it. So, let's cut to the process! Let's go! First things first, I don't own a printer. So, in order to print out all of these super secret furry patterns, which I'm not gonna show you all of because go buy it yourself, guys. Uh, I had to go to the store and, uh, print something out and I already messed up because it literally says that it has A4 and letter formatting. I didn't know those were different things, so I printed the A4 ones on letter paper. So I think my pattern's actually a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be, if that's how the math works out. I think that's how science works. Maybe. Uh, it actually could be bigger or smaller, I'm really not sure. Anyway, so I got all the pattern stuff uh, cut out, and it came with like a lot of instructions, even though it literally says it's not a tutorial on the website. Uh, it came with a bunch of instructions that I just went, to, and then I decided to just try to do it on my own. That was a bad idea. First step, already failing. When you go through all of the instructions, there's like 30 pages of just information, and it's incredibly useful. It comes with the pattern for the foam base, for the lining, for the fur, um, and a full page of instructions of stuff that's like, here's some supplementary material, here's some other stuff you might need. Just instant useful information. It even comes with several different eye and tongue types and ear type, which is super useful because no one wants to make a cookie cutter fursuit, you know? First things first, I separated out all of the pattern pieces uh, into EVA foam, foam foam, which is like your green and your high density foam, and I threw all of the rest of them kind of far away because I didn't need them right now. A few of the foam patterns said that they needed to be cut on one inch foam, but since they needed to be flipped, I just cut them out on two inch foam and then cut the pieces in half. It turned out just fine the world did not explode. It was fine. I just assume uh, one inch foam is more obtainable than two inch right now. Have you guys noticed foam's really expensive right now? I mean, it's always expensive, but it's more expensive. The base of her fursuits are EVA foam, uh, this stuff. And uh, she actually has support beams right here. I just didn't put those in. It was actually a mistake on one of the pattern pieces. Let me find it. Why did I throw the instructions across the room? I found it. Okay, so there's one pattern piece and it's the only pattern, pe pattern piece that I'm gonna like show show to you. This pattern piece uh, says um, trace and flip, uh, but cut one. You really don't, you don't need to trace and flip it. You only need to cut one of these. So I think that might've been a misspell or I didn't, or I did something blatantly wrong. It worked totally fine. Like the inside of the head looks fine. See, it's right there on the inner brow. I'm using a fresh pack of razor blades to cut everything out. You can put them in a mechanism if you want to. I just noticed that dulls them out faster and they dull out pretty fast as is. Also, every single pattern tells you what to attach it to, but my brain still could not comprehend what a face piece was, or what a head piece was, or what a forehead piece was, so I still had to look up tutorials because I just couldn't think properly. Some of the instructions told me to bevel edges, so I started beveling the edges, which I didn't know what that meant, but it just means cutting a little slanty slant on them, like a 45 degree angle. That's what you're supposed to do. It probably would have been easier to do with like a Dremel, but I used a kind of dull X-Acto knife. So I know I'm getting a lot of things wrong today, but here's another thing that I got blatantly wrong. Contact cement and rubber cement are different things. 
and nobody told me that. Uh, I was under the impression this is the same as this, so use this, and also, uh, you're gonna need a respirator if you do use this, um, I have issues finding filters for respirators right now, but I'll link on Amazon some brands that I think are pretty reputable. Also, I'll link some gloves that I like to use too. Uh, this stuff you can use without a respirator, but it doesn't work. If you have to use hot glue and not contact cement, you're gonna have to use a lot of pins, is something that I noticed, because if you hot glue it together, you're gonna need something to keep it together, because contact cement just connects, it's kind of in the name. Now, here's the fun part, gluing the foam onto the EVA foam boy. Isn't this fun? So, first things first, I- it took me a little while to figure out how the face went together. So here's me trying to figure it out. I feel like a diagram would have been really useful, but again, the pattern literally states it's not a tutorial. I eventually kind of figured it out by watching a few of her other videos, but it took me a minute. Also, here's another part where I mess up. I'm supposed to carve the cheek in a little bit. I just didn't do that. I even read that I was supposed to do it. I just didn't do it. I don't know why. I'm kind of a- I'm kind of a flawed creature if you haven't noticed. So here's me just blatantly hot gluing- I bet this added a lot of weight to the head now that I'm thinking about it. Hot glue adds a lot of weight to fursuits. Um, I bet contact cement's a lot lighter. Finally here the head is starting to take shape and it looks a little bit better, but I'm noticing the lower jaw just looks very- the lower jaw just looks like it has a receded chin, which I mean I had that- I had to get that surgically fixed, so I understand. So I added a little- I added a little bit more foam to the jaw just because I didn't really like how it looked. I assumed that I did something wrong. Really, I don't think there's anything wrong with this pattern, it's just my ability to read it needs some work because I've never done this before. I'm kind of dumb. Another little thing that I do is I use pins constantly. Count your pins, guys. This is really important. Like, count your pins and make sure you know exactly how many are in the head. That's super necessary if you're going to be doing this. Because you never want to take a needle to the face. Glue hot glue takes uh, probably about 15 to 30 minutes to dry in between layers, so I leave the I've been I leave those pins in for a good little bit. I spend a little bit of time rounding stuff out, and I even add foam around the lip where I feel like I accidentally carved it down a little bit too much. I'm starting to notice that issue that I had by not narrowing out the cheek earlier, but I think I was able to work my way around it and get it right. A lot of issues with buying fursuit patterns, your mileage may vary. You need to kind of have an understanding of where to carve heads and where to fix little problems that crop up, which is not something a pattern can teach. So I would say this is an advanced pattern, and it literally says it's an advanced pattern, and I'm not even 100% sure I wound up with the kind of suit that I was supposed to wind up with. <laughs> so I'm, uh, so as you can see, I'm noticing it's super uneven, and I kind of have to fi fix the lower jaw just to make it a little bit more even. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm leaving this in the video, but at this point I notice my puppy comes in, so I move all of the pins and all of the sharp things to the side and put a book on top of them so he can't hurt himself. And then I proceed to snuggle my doggy a little bit because he came in and he demanded cuddles. <laughs> Back to the fursuit making! Sorry about that. Slight detour. <laughs> my dog's name is Mal, by the way. Like Malcolm Reynolds. He's literally named after Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly. When working with hot glue, this just tends to happen. Sometimes your pin will get stuck in the foam, and what I've learned to do is get a pair of pliers and just pull the pin out. That's kind of the smartest way that you can do it if the ball falls off of the pin. Just grab a pair of pliers and get that sucker out of there. Don't leave it in! By the way, guys, uh, if you've never used these spring-loaded scissors to carve fur, uh, I used to get blisters from using normal scissors. These spring-loaded ones are just absolutely phenomenal. They are some of the best things in the business, oh my gosh. So, this is sort of the point that I got where I got to where I realized I just needed to sleep on this head. Uh, this is one of the best things that you can do while working on fursuits is just take, take a little bit of time and walk away from the project and come back with it to it with a fresh vision. I text my fursuit making friend Anna about it. I kind of thought it looked like a duck at this point. I talked to a few of my friends about it and basically the consensus was that I had left the upper muzzle a little bit too thick and that's why I was getting ducktails vibes. Yeah, this is about what it looked like once I had left it off. I'm glad I took this- I- I'm glad that I had enough sense to take this footage. Wow, look how smart- look how smart past Hannah was here. Taking a whole video to show you guys what I was talking about. 
with fresh eyes, I start, I get back to the head and I start putting the ears on. What I did is I re-looked at the Etsy images and decided what about my head didn't look like hers and tried to fix those problem areas. Uh, I repositioned the ears a little bit because the suit ears are supposed to be set back a little bit as if the character is running very fast. Now, this is the finished product. I actually did wind up going in and shaving down the muzzle a little bit so it does not look like a ducky anymore. I even added a little bit more foam to the sides of the jaw because I wanted like a good, a good size sort of masculine jaw. I didn't want like a very receded like, I didn't want it to look like that, I guess. So I had to widen the jaw a little bit. This isn't the original pattern. This part's pretty much the original pattern. This part is not. I messed up a lot on this costume, I'm not even gonna lie. I don't think I did the pattern justice. I think a better fursuit maker would do it justice, but hopefully this can help some people out and troubleshoot some of the issues with it. I didn't use the entirety of the pattern. It also comes with lining and some fur pattern as well. I didn't wind up using any of that. Uh, I lined my fursuit heads in a kind of specific way and uh, the one that the she provided didn't work super well for that, which is not saying it's bad. I prefer just I prefer just using a balaclava method and attaching it to the zipper in a specific way. It's different. Every fursuit maker makes stuff different. That doesn't make us bad people. That just makes us different. Let's just get this right out of the way real quick. If you glue your seams, you're not making fursuits wrong. If you do foam digigrade and not the pillow method, you're not doing fursuits wrong. There's not a lot of ways to make a fursuit wrong unless you're like, I don't know, putting metal in the corner of your fursuit lips so it will cut your customers. But no psychopath would do that. Seriously, I don't understand why some people get so high and mighty about this is the right way to make a fursuit. There's not really a right way to do it. We're just a bunch of dorks out here having fun, you know? And uh, I think that this EVA foam method is actually really awesome. I'm probably gonna start using this in a lot of my suits with contact cement and not rubber cement. I can't believe I did that, guys. I really can't believe that's a thing that I did. Also, if you stayed to the end of the video, congratulations. You get to learn something about my secret fursuit project. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to be debuting this fursuit at Megaplex, and it's a secret. The design of the character is based off of something that I hold very dear to myself, and I'm excited to reveal it to you guys in slow little parts, because I'm buying a lot of fursuit patterns and testing them out on this character. Uh, so let's, let's just get into it. First reveal of this character. Whoosh! It's a feline! You feline fine? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh god, bad puns. Yep, it's gonna be a kitty, which you guys know from the fact I made a kitty. Specifically, a cheetah, which you can tell from the little teardrop markings. So yeah, all of that was already revealed in the video, but you get to see part of the design. Ain't that kind of cool? Overall review of the Miss Wars pattern. I like it a lot. It's a very high quality pattern and I will say it is not for beginner people. Like, if you're a beginner, I would definitely try out one of her other patterns because it seems like her other patterns are actually more tutorial based. Because this one's not a tutorial. This one is specifically a pattern. I found like one mistype on one piece, but I don't even think it was that big of a deal, honestly. I'm not much of a stickler for that kind of stuff. All right, dudes and dudettes, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hoped you liked talking with me. I hope I didn't make no sense, honestly. I tried. I really did try. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, hopefully you learned a few things. Hopefully you'll buy this pattern yourself and try it out. Maybe it'll work out for you. It worked out for me pretty well. Maybe you can try it and see if you like it. Anyways, dudes and dudettes, I'm out of here. Love you guys so much. Stay beautiful. All of those other generic YouTuber responses and all that. And...